Yo guys, Car Madnap back with another review. This time I've got the Porsche Boxster S. This is the 981 generation. And in today's video, I just want to find out, you know, this being my first ever time driving a Porsche, I just want to see what the Porsche hype is about and what better way to do it with technically the most compromised version of their sports car model. Why am I saying a compromised experience? Well, that's because of this. This car is the Boxster. Now, obviously what that means is it's not got the traditional rear engine, rear wheel drive layout that Porsche are famous for, and it's got a soft top fabric roof. Yeah, so you got extra added weight due to that for weight folding, sort of roof folding mechanism. And yeah, so we're gonna see if these are a deal breaker or not. Let's start off with the looks of the Porsche. Now, Porsche is obviously a very high end respectable brand. So that means it's gotta have a lot of road presence. And oh my God, just look at her. Look at all these body lines and sculptures, just the way the body just molds around the arches. Oh, it's just pure class and pure sex. Okay, excuse my language. But guys, look at this. 63 reg. This is a 981, obviously, early 981. And if I slapped a private reg on there, you would not doubt me for a second if I said this car was from 2019. It's literally just a testimony to how timeless Porsches can really be. Honestly, what a beautiful, sleek design. I'm very impressed. And that is obviously helped with these lovely 20 inch wheels. You know, they're lovely. And then behind them, we've got, I believe, six pot calipers, uh, plenty of stopping performance. Uh, we've got this lovely, lovely, oh, so much fistable action in there, guys. Oh, God damn. You know what I mean? That's the lovely. You know, obviously, this car's mid engine, so that explains the air intakes. More on the engine later. We've got a lovely, lovely active aero spoiler. I think this really sets off the rear end of the car. I think the rear end in general is what it's just it's just so beautiful. I love I love these these AED tail lamps as well. They're just so iconic. You know, you can see a bit of the previous gen, you know, the 987, but you know, they've just revised it. You know, it's that's what I love about Porsche. You know, they keep true to their original sort of design. You know, you, they're very iconic. You can tell that it's a Porsche straight away. Um, you know, they don't try to change things up, but they still manage to find simple details and just modernize them. And it just changes the whole look of the car. It's amazing. We've got lovely twin pipes, obviously, because this being the S, the normal version just has a squared offset. Um, and this has the optional extra Porsche sports exhaust, which you'll hear later on. Guys, I've talked about how modern the exterior is. Take a look at how modern the interior is. So guys, you join me in the cabin of the Boxster S and my gosh, you know, if you thought the exterior was beautiful, you know, the interior is just beautiful. We've got the classic Porsche clocks in front of us, you know, massive rev counter, uh, you know, classic speedo that goes up in 25s. You know, it's such a nice place to be. This car has got the optional sport chrono package. So that gets us stuff like launch control, sports plus, and most importantly, this nice little stopwatch right in front of us. And guys, just in general, like the whole timeless sort of theme about the Boxer S, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like we've got a really modern looking sort of climate control display. Um, we've got this lovely leather dash. We've got a lovely chrome around the vents. And like I said, if you slap the private reg on this car, you just wouldn't know the age. It's, it's literally so timeless. Yeah, okay, the buttons around here are a little bit crowded. It can be maybe a difficult, bit difficult to use, but everything's in reach. One thing I love about it is the fact that it's somehow so closeted yet so cozy at the same time. Dri Porsche are all about their sort of driving positions and driving experience. And you can really tell, you know, I'm so close to the steering wheel. I'm really low down. I'm hugged in by these sports seats. It's just such an experience sitting in this car, but it's not all perfect. You know, we've got no cup holders here. And one big, one big gripe I have with Porsche is their options. Why do you guys make it so tricky to option your cars? And why is nothing standard? Heated seats in a price point of this car, this car brand new was ridiculous. You know, you're looking at over 50 grand and it's not got heated seats as standard. That's not on, that is not on. But I can maybe forgive it with that because of what they've given us under the bonnet. So guys, what powers the Porsche Boxster S? Don't ever get sent like that again, guys. Of course, I know the engine's not in the front, but to be fair, it's not in the rear as well. So where is it? Oh, it's not here. That's right, folks. It's not here because 
Porsche don't actually let us see the engine as it's mid-engined. Yeah, but at least that doubles up for double the practicality. You know, we've got load luggage here, you know, pretty decent, I would not lie. And we've got obviously space at the front. So it makes up for the lack of space in the cabin. But that's enough talking about practicality. It's a Porsche at the end of the day. We don't care. We want to see how it drives. So let's take it for a spin. So guys, what is the Boxster S like to drive? Well, best to last guys, so we're gonna actually take things easy. We've got the car in its normal automatic setting. We've got none of the sports mode on. Literally just got the car in automatic, roof down, and just enjoy the vibes, you know what I mean? So, to start off with steering. Oh, there you go, that's right. Uh, to start off with steering. So, it is an electric rack. But it's not as light as you think. Now I think Porsche have obviously Porsche have obviously set this up so that you know you can get a bit of a, you know comfortability palming the wheel etc. Um, but it is heavier than your you know your obvious rivals you know Mercedes, BMW etc. But at the end of the day, they have to obviously make the steering feel direct. So I can forgive them for that. Um, as for ride, you know what? It is surprisingly a bit choppy for something that you know what 45 year olds would probably most likely own but one thing i've noticed is a lot of the 45 year olds choose pasm for that very reason obviously this car hasn't got the adaptive dampers that's what pasm is um, and yeah i definitely recommend specking those because as a young guy for me they're completely the ride's completely fine you know it's a little bit harsh a little bit choppy but at the end of the day that's what you, you get for virtually no body roll none of that um, so it is it is quite nice um, aside from those things pdk it's a dual clutch transmission yet yeah. it just seems to know what gear to be in what what sort of velocity you want the shift at you don't even feel the shifts you know what i mean it's it's it's, it's very sort of close to an eight speed zf so that's a compliment i'd say to both gearboxes um yeah right now we're literally on a dual carriageway cruising you know at around 40 miles an hour and you know it's barely ticking over sort of 1400 rpm to 1300 rpm it's, it's very quiet you know that's one thing i love this 3.4 is a very sonorous engine of course when you're on it but it can also just sort of learn to relax fuel economy of course it's not going to be the greatest thing but at the end of the day people that have these in mind aren't too fussed about the fuel economy as long as it doesn't dip below 20 miles per gallon which is easily achievable you know i can definitely see why the boxer s is, has such a daily prospect to it you know of course two seats but you know if you're someone that's a lone ranger and come on guys ask yourself a question do you really need all that passengers uh, you know most of your drives to work you're by yourself you know what i mean so to have this as a toy for yourself it kind of does make sense um now i did say obviously we'll find out what it's like to drive when you're on it but i've got a tunnel here and i think it would just be rude not to have a little go so let's do a couple of downshifts here and there completely stuck in exhaust just the optional extra and the fact that you can just do that when you see a tunnel and flick it back and that's it it's quiet as a feather crazy i really like i'm really really gelling with this box of rest guys i really am honestly very comfortable you know and you just imagine with active dampers it'd be even more comfortable guys oh. and just to think this is what's really crazy yeah this car is meant to be the floppiest of them all, you know. The, 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 you know. Uh, let's be honest. A lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, the female audience, you know, that's what Porsche are trying to target with this kind of car, especially in, you know, boxster for format. And it's yet yeah, this agile and this, this capable. I just want to know what the GT products are like. Please, someone get me a GT. Please, someone get me in a GT car. I'm begging you. Please, Porsche. Please, <laughs> give me a press car. Please. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's find out what this car is like on a spirited drive. Well, to find that out, you've got to flick the gearbox into manual. You've got to hold the traction button. Unfortunately, despite being a Porsche, guys, traction control still doesn't turn fully off. And we've got Sports Plus engaged and we've got the optional extra Porsche Sports Exhaust engaged. Now, 
car is ready to be enjoyed. Let's just enjoy it. Guys, you can already hear the pops and bangs. <laughs> oh, bit of traction issues. Now, obviously, this car is open diff. You know, it's not spec with PTV. So, I definitely would recommend that as an option. But, uh, guys, oh, it's just so beautiful. These road surfaces, they're a bit greasy, they're a bit bumpy. And yet, the box that just deals with it so well. You know, and this is not even on PASM, you know, the adaptive dampers. Oh, the torque from that 3.4. It's just amazing on the way, it loves to rev out and the fact that it's just paired with this beautiful PDK transmission The gear shifts are literally lightning quick guys, lightning quick, it's ridiculous, honestly What an enjoyable car, you know, just listen to that And this is what's beautiful about the box though, the Cayman, yes, okay, it might be a little less rigid But you can get that beautiful exhaust note just over your head wow you feel the wind in your hair this truly is an experience oh my gosh and guys it's just oh, make it dance around what i love about it it just feels so energetic yet so safe at the same time it gives you it's very confidence inspiring it's got a lot of mechanical grip and it's so adjustable you know you back off the throttle a little bit the car just turns in beautifully and Give it more, give it the beans, and the car will just slide out. It's, it's literally the best of both worlds. It's actually crazy how they've managed to do this. You know, at the end of the day, guys, the 911 gets a lot of hype, but the Cayman's mid engine, I mean, sorry, the 981 is mid engine. So you have to remember, you know, technically this is the more superior layout. Yes, the 911 gets a lot of hype, and you know, it can arguably be more characterful with that rear engine. controls are just so delicate and so spot on at the same time i just i can't describe it you guys have to drive one of these you have to have to have to So guys, what's my overall verdict on the Porsche Boxster S? Please, give it the respect it deserves. I know it's a soft top, I know it's a cabriolet, but at the end of the day, guys, this is still a serious machine and I'm glad I've got to drive technically what's considered one of the most softest lineup in the Porsche sports car category. Guys, I please, please, please like, share and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what car you'd like to see next. But for now, I'm in car my nap.